Hello and welcome to TTT. the yog pod episode three because i can't remember the no, number it's of not episode the others. Uh, it's christmas podcast simon it's christmas are you warm and cozy and wherever you are out there in the world listening to this you might be on the bus well, with, me? Your, with your woolly hat no, on no I'm, I'm here you in, might be walking around in the, in the snow no you no, might I'm indoors. be indoors in it's your quite, it's still november actually lovely warm um uh, it's not even christmas yet it's not even close well listen I don't know what's going to happen over the next period of time. We might not have time to record it over Christmas, so we're doing it in advance. So, Simon, are you excited for Christmas? Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. Have you put the decorations up and uh, decorate the tree? Actually, I've, um, I'm have i sort of non-traditional, I guess, when it comes to right. uh, Christmas okay. stuff. And instead of normal Christmas decorations, what I've done is I've ordered um, Christmassy-themed Lego. Right. Um, that I'm going to put up. Put and, together. Yeah, yeah. And There's a couple of ones which is like, there's one of Santa in front of like a fireplace, which is quite nice. And there's also like Santa's workshop that uh, has sort of like snow capped roofs. So what, you're just going to put them around the room? Yeah. Like uh, yeah. maybe the fireplace on top of the fireplace? Well, I'm, I'm thinking they'll go next to like my Tower of Orthanc and my Simpson Tales. Oh, it's weird. I sort of, <laughs> I'm sort of getting the vibe that you live in Legoland. I kind of do. Do you have like a do you have like a massive because oh man, just rip this fireplace out. We're going to put a Lego one there instead. Rip these sofas out. They're going. They take them away. We're going to put some Lego sofas here. I couldn't afford that. That's ridiculous. With Lego cushions. I mean, have you seen how much Lego you get for for like you know two hundred quid? You get like a few thousand pieces of Lego, which is just enough to build. Like something that's a foot tall, you know? When's your birthday? Because I think it's we should take March. you to Legoland. I think you'd like it. D, what, in Denmark? Oh, maybe I'll get you some tickets for Legoland as a Christmas present. Or Windsor. How about that? We'll go to Windsor. Legoland Windsor. We'll take in Windsor Castle yeah. as well. The Queen might be staying there. Well, you know. We drop in on the Queen. She's uh, she's a big fan of Lego. The whole, <laughs> the whole thing is made of crown, Lego crown. Sure. Her corgis are actually made of Lego. Lego corgis? They're Lego corgis. They were replaced back in 1984. I'm not sure I'd like to live in a house entirely made of Lego. I mean, the Lego TV might be a tricky one. I don't think they'll be very much on. I can imagine, you You know, you get up in the middle of the night to go to the loo. It's dark, the light isn't on, you're stumbling around, and you put your foot on a piece of comfortable carpet. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> You know how it is. It'd be like a death oh, trap. God, it would be awful, wouldn't it? You'd go into the kitchen, Ooh. you'd cut up some Lego ham with your Lego knife. Lego ham? Where is this going? You have a nice Lego glass of uh, Lego water, Lego orange juice. Lego orange you'd juice. Just, it would be horrible. It'd be like some sort of horror film. Everything would be replaced with Lego. You wouldn't be able to survive. It's like King Midas, isn't it? Everything you touch turns to Lego. That's right. Oh, that would be it. So, yeah, you don't live there, though. Uh, but do you want Lego for Christmas? Did, was Lego something you always got for Christmas? Or I got, yeah, I got some of it. It was, um, obviously, we know the story about the big yellow teapot. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, but that but wasn't Lego. No, no. no. Um, I should probably make one out of Lego one day. Someone sent us a real big old one. And it's Someone still did. upstairs. A yeah. legit actual one. A yeah, real one. That they got Can't be many eBay. of those around these days. No. I don't think they make them anymore. Well, um, I don't think so. It's not much of a market for giant plastic teapots. Do we have any guests, possibly, uh, that you've brought along for the Christmas podcast? Anyone? Um, well... I've only got President Barack Obama. Oh. Is, Actually, is he still president? Only got president. Yeah, he is, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. He for is. another six months or so. I know the election things in America go on for a very yeah, long time. Yeah. Um, but no, he is, as of 2016, 2015, Christmas, president, yes. Is he there? Uh, no, he's not here yet. His, oh, um, his limo is late. Yeah, his limo, he was... He's got stuck in all the winter traffic weather. He's on the M4, right. I can tell you. He's on his way and he should be here before the end of the show. Oh, 
Fantastic. So I'll keep you updated. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Is yeah, there anyone be... else but more Christmassy that you've got? Idea in more the... Christmassy than President Barack Hussein Obama? <laughs> yeah. I can't really think of anyone. OK, well, that's good. Um, so I've got... We, we're mixing up the format with your pod, as always. Um, it's, it's keeping us on our toes. That's right. And this time... Uh, we've gone and done a little bit of research. I haven't done it, but Tom has done it in a kind of low-level QI elves, Christmassy uh, elves kind of way. He's like a step down from an elf. He's like a gnome. A He's Christmas like a, gnome. a bad gnome. He's kind of ripped a bunch of facts a off fairy. the internet, off Google. He's a Christmas fairy. And so we have them here. Do you want to hear some facts? He, he typed fa Christmas facts into Google. That's right. Clicked the, uh, the top one. No, actually he clicked I'm, I'm Feeling Lucky. <laughs> and, uh, and he's just copy pasted in, that in, into a notepad for yeah. me. Yeah. So here, I, here we go. You ready for a Christmas fact? Norwegian scientists have hypothesised that Rudolf's red nose is probably the result of a parasitic infection of his respiratory system. Oh my God! That's is it fatal? Well, I think that it was it's probably some sort of worms. So I think probably some anti worm medication. They give that to like a lot of animals, don't they? Because you know there's anti deworming there's pills. There's children listening to this who are now crying. Well, They're no, in listen. tears. They're like, Mummy, Mummy, it's made of going to die. A lot of That's animals like. have worms. It's a f thing, you know. They there's like there's this whole thing. What like, about worms? Do worms have worms? Uh, they might have smaller worms. I'm sure the somewhere... The worms have tiny cats inside of them. No, I very much doubt that. They, they rub their bottom against the dirt and, like, little cats are left behind. Oh, my goodness. That like is a cat's head. horrible. Now, OK, let's move on from that fact. Uh, <laughs> that, this leads nicely onto this other next fact, second fact. Um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the things that was created was a, a cat organ. Do you know what that is? Have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah, I have the the one in which you it like pulls the tails and the cat's meow. It's like a series of boxes where there's like a series of tubes. seven or eight cats a in little cages, thing. and it's like a piano keyboard sort of it's behind German, the isn't it? behind the because you know a piano works by like when you press the keys like it thumps a cats string. Cats and jammer is it? Cats and jammer. It's a cats and clavier. I thought it's cats and jammer like um. The um oh the character from uh, Black Book. Well, maybe it is, but in this website that I've been linked, it's a cat's and piano, oh, and right, so okay. it's it's kind of like you know instead of it just gently pinches their their tail so, and they make a meow. On. Is this what ha this is what we had before the internet and Jingle Cats? That's right. This is like an early meow. form. Meow 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 meow. That's meow, meow. <laughs> I started too high. I started too high. <laughs> I think you started fine. Oh, Carry God. on. I was enjoying that. That's a really Christmassy tune. Oh, meow. it's just warming the cockles. Oh, that was Stila Nacht. Do you like that? <laughs> it's so accurate. Bizarrely. You've really, you've really got it down. Are you a cat whisperer? I'm a cat fancier. Oh, right, okay, one of those things. I can't get enough of them pusk. Okay, well, good. Them, that is great. As long as they don't sit on me with a wet ass. Uh, you know, next that's gross. question. Uh, the Germans made the first artificial Christmas trees out of dyed goose feathers. Right. Yeah, I wonder how many gooses they had to take out to get... Geese. Enough. I guess they Geese. were eating them at Christmas anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, you know, they had the feathers left over. But, of course, in America, they have Thanksgiving, and it's Thanksgiving that they have the turkey. So when it comes around to Christmas, they tend to have ham. Didn't they always so, used to have... Um, so oh. would Americans make artificial Christmas trees out of pig's hair? Pig's skin? Pig's hair trotters. Crackling. Trotters. Pig's trotters. Pig crackling. Crackling Christmas trees. Yeah. They would be delicious. They would be. You could just eat them oh my God. after you're done. Your, your pets would go crazy, Oh, the, pet, the dog would, that Christmas tree, you come back to it next morning, there'd be just a dog looking really guilty. A big fat dog being <laughs> sick everywhere. <laughs> That's what it would be. It would. Oh, gross. Oh. Um, right. So there you go. Uh, next fact the true love mentioned in the song 12 Days of Christmas does, oh, yeah. does not refer to a romantic couple. What? 
What, what is that song? What, what do you mean the true love mentioned in 12 Days of Christmas? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gets to oh, me. Oh, right, okay. A partridge on a birthday. Can so you sing it in the... What is ca- a true love? Is it a friend? Is it like friend Can zone? you sing that as if it were played on the cat? Uh, <laughs> to me, a partridge in a pear tree. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I just... <laughs> And a partridge in a pear tree. Wow, we really are not in tune there, but that is magnificent. Thank you. Uh, so the true love mentioned in that song is not a romantic couple. What is it then? It is the Catholic Church's code for God. What? So it's actually that's, God. That's bollocks. So God, Surely. So God gave us all the things in the 12 days of Christmas. Do you get it? So on the first day of Christmas, God gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. And then on the second day, he gave me two turtle doves. So he gave me all these things, do you see? He created everything. I don't know about that. That doesn't sound right. But are you, also... Are you sure it's not Sauron? The person who receives... Are you sure it's not Sauron? I've not finished. Because it's got five <laughs> golden rings. Hang on. Oh, my God. You're onto something. <laughs> five rings for the, the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Yeah. Um, five... No, was it five to the elves... It was oh shit! Hang on. No, it was three to the elves. Three to the five elves. Five to the dwarf lords. Se- was there seven, a seven to men. Seven to men. Oh god! I no, don't... nine to men. Men had nine. nine. Men had nine. Well, yeah. there's a lot of them, weren't there? There were quite a lot. And the partridge in the pear tree. <laughs> <laughs> I was just drinking. You idiot! <laughs> I just put spiced winter red tea right out of my nose. Lovely. I was just taking a. I thought you were going to go. It's giving on. you a red nose, like Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, That's the secret. Shit. That's what it is. It's not a parasitic infection of his rep- oh. respiratory system. He was just drinking some spiced yeah. red tea yeah. and someone made him laugh. See, kids, it's all worked out nicely. But there you go. So the person who receives the gifts in those right. represents someone who has accepted the code. Um, for example, the partridge in a pear tree represents Christ. Oh, for fuck's sake. And so, Are you kidding me? Apparently, in the 12 days of Christmas, uh, my true love is God gave a partridge in a pear tree to... Christ. What? Well, okay. What? Okay. As an atheist, I was happy to sing the 12 days of Christmas because I thought it was... Um, Just a, about giving presents. A secular song. I think that's the right The term. two turtle doves represent the Old and New Testaments. Okay. <laughs> right? Keep going. I don't know. That's all. That's literally all Tom's put. What's the three I French hens? The French hens are actually the three the, apostles. No, there's more than that. The apostles. three apostles. The three, the th- Holy Trinity, right? That's probably the oh. the three French hens are probably the Holy Ghost, uh, the Holier Ghost, and the Ghost of Christmas Past. The farmer, <laughs> the Asian, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. That's right. And yeah. number four, Holy Spirits is gin. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, yes, I did actually. Four. I did. <laughs> 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 I did know that false fact. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Four, what was four? Four. What, do you think I'm a fucking idiot? Call, calling birds? Four oh, calling birds. Four calling preachers. No, no, it's the, the four... Um, what are there four of? The books. The four... Um, the four books of uh, the... oh the, the, Matthew, the, Mark, Luke and John. Yeah, what are they called? Uh, oh, hang on, I'll Google it. Yeah, I can't remember the name for it either. Uh, and what are they called? I did, They're called I did the four evangelists, apparently. What? No, that doesn't sound right. The the gospels. The gospels. There you go. The yeah. gospels. Okay. What about five? Well, we've been that. That's the rings. Uh, the five from rings the Hobbit. for the dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> for the dwarven lords. <laughs> six okay. must be. God. What is six? What I is don't know. six sheep are laying? Six uh, days of Christmas. I don't know. Six sheep are shagging. <laughs> That's six geese are laying. Is the six, six geese. Um, the six geese are actually the six lords of hell. Oh, my God. It's actually the six days of creation. I found oh, it. Oh, that makes sense now. I like, found it. Like the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, The Sixth Day. <laughs> Yeah. The six, six, seven swans are swimming. Can you guess what that is? is? Does it refer to the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, the seven sacraments? It does. Have you Googled it as well? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking what about. What are the seven no, I just, sacraments? I just knew that off. 
you know, the seven... The seven sacraments, the sacrament of the... Uh, the Catholic uh, Church. Yeah. Okay. The... Father, the, the uh, Baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, penance, anointing of the sick, matrimony and death. Okay. I don't know. No, I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, look, Google can help you if you're interested So throughout in your life, there's seven <sighs> sacred rituals that go through that someone goes through typically i think maybe that's right okay yeah. and All then right. so what's eight eight is the uh, maids of milking right which is the eight beatitudes beatitudes no there were there were four of them there was john paul <laughs> george <laughs> ringo <laughs> oh. Actually, if, you, if you include pete best it's five sometimes they put an extra couple <laughs> in don't they they always say there was like a fifth beetle but there's so many different fifth beetles that there's probably at least eight that's true yeah yeah so okay. that's those ones and then nine there was the electric keyboard player the beatles that's right yeah uh nine ladies dancing there's the guy who played the triangle that one bez was in them as yeah, well yeah. he was in tambourine yeah Nine ladies dancing refers to the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. What the fuck does that mean? The well, nine of course, it's fruits. the kiwi fruit, uh, mm, mm. the watermelon, avocado. avocado, of course. A tomato is a fruit. Ah, but God, don't put it in the fruit salad. Whatever Strawberry you do. isn't a fruit. No, it's a drooper. Did you know that? It's a drooper. That's right. It's called a drooper because <laughs> they. It's like a elberries are droopers. Oh, oh. don't worry about it. Uh, the um, koala Ten? bear. Oh, right. I thought you were still... More the still, Sure. The koala bear isn't a fruit. Uh, it's an animal, but... Ten Lords of Leaping refers to the Ten Commandments. Oh, <laughs> that's an obvious one. That's an obvious one. Eleven Apostles and twelve... What do you mean eleven? Ap- oh! Apparently they were faithful apostles because... Judas. Well, Judas didn't count. Gotcha. And uh, he gets gets knocked out. And, and twelve is apostles, including Judas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, good. I mean, that was a fantastic fact. I, I'm hell. really pleased with that one. But who knew that the sec, the what we thought was a secular song, I, actually, we were singing the praises of of the Lord God, even I, though we didn't know. I don't know if that's. I, it sounds like bollocks to me, though. I still don't believe it. It does sound a bit strange because parts in a prayer tray being being Christ. Sorry, what? Partridge in a prayer tray being Christ. It's a bit of a weird Jesus kind of... on a cross! <laughs> <laughs> Most of Santa's reindeer have male-sounding names. Okay? Yeah. Such as Blitz and Comet. Like Vixen. Blitz and Comet. Vixen. Hang on. Vixen is not a male-sounding name, is it? Okay, well, first of all, all of the antlers... Um, Pulling the sleigh are what most of the most sorry most of the reindeers pulling the sleigh don't have antlers right normally oh okay so that means they're females oh so the ones at the front have big antlers and then the other ones behind them don't hmm oh god this fact is a bit weird most of Zadis reindeer have male sounding names such as Blitz and Comet and Cupid however okay. male reindeers oh male reindeers shed their antlers around Christmas they sh- antlers shed what they just fall off apparently. So oh the God. reindeer pulling Santa's sleigh are likely not male, but f- all female or castrati. Castrati. Um, castrati. So they, they've been uh, gelded, I so think is the nice term. Well, they are pets, so you don't want the reindeers getting all frantic when they're on, supposed to be pulling the sleigh, you know. Oh. He's behind another reindeer. He's got his nose in another that's reindeer's quite, butt. That's quite sad that they, you know, they've all been castrated. Well, I mean, that's... What... Is that where the... Uh, the idea of having walnuts around Christmas comes from. Oh, yeah. Because walnuts do look a lot like testicles. Well, there you go. Maybe that's why we call our um, nutsack. Oh, my God. According to Guinness World Records, the tallest Christmas tree ever cut was a 221-foot Douglas fir displayed at 1950 in Seattle, Washington. 221 feet? Yeah, that's pretty big, Bloody isn't it? Bloody hell. How did they get that into the shopping centre? I mean... To- just the massive truck or series of trucks carrying it. One truck couldn't carry that, surely. That is a massive tree. Have you seen the tree in Cabot Circus That's this Christmas? 70, 75 metres, isn't it? Have you it? seen the tree? It's like, have you seen it? It's, I haven't, It's no. like a cone. It's like a white cone. Do you know cone. who turned on the Christmas lights? Tell me. Warwick Davis. He did not. He did. He did not. He did. He was literally over there. He was over there. 
Doing the Christmas lights? Yeah. When did we, how do we miss this? I didn't this? get a call from him. Why didn't we hear about He's this? He's got my phone number. We follow his Twitter. He doesn't follow me on Twitter. Is he there? Hello, Sam. Oh, he's here. He was under the desk. Hello, I've been hiding. I'm more like nervous. Well, what happened, Warwick? He might remember me from such films as Willow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> 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 what have you? What, what were you? Why didn't you tell us you were turning the Christmas lights on, Warwick? It's I, an honour. I've been very busy. I've been doing panto. How many Christmas lights have you had to turn on? Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> God, it, you know, you've got a lot of dates, obviously. With uh, what other towns have you done? I did Margate. Oh, good. I did Birchfield. <laughs> I did Spunkington. Oh, it's popular there. Good did, turnout. Uh, Mumblesford. Mumblesford. Oh, they've got a lovely little yes. river running through that place. Uh, I, I love did Gerbilham. Uh, Gerbilham. Uh, Gerbilham. Gerbilham <laughs> on the shiver. <laughs> they've got a really good football team. They, yeah, they do. On, on the what, by the way? Uh, what, on the on the shiver. On the. <laughs> Is it? Jebel Hub on the Shizzle. Okay. Yes. Mm. That's the name of the, of the town. Oh, it's it's a lovely place. Man, they, you've been busy. Are they so, goodness me. Well, fa- thank you. I've been very busy. Oh, I know. I've been I'll, doing panto. I'll let you off. I've Warwick. been playing a dwarf. Have you? Yes. Oh, well, congratulations on that prestigious role. Um, He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Warwick's no. gone, he's off again. He's busy, he's got some more Christmas lights to turn he's on. Off. He's Can't got, stick around. He's got to do the, um, oh, the washing up. That, that, yeah. made me, uh, that made me giggle. Um, the traditional three colours of Christmas yeah. are green, red and gold. Yes. Green is a symbol of life and rebirth. Red symbolises the blood of Christ. Of Jesus Christ. And gold. The blood of Jesus Christ. Represents wealth and royalty. So, Santa, when you're looking at him, he's all in his red suit. Actually, the blood of Christ. It's a white suit dipped in the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Right. Um, according to data <laughs> analysed from Facebook posts. According to data from Star Trek The Next Generation. Two weeks before Christmas is one of the two most popular times for couples to break up. Oh, my God. However, Christmas Day itself is the least likely day for breakups in the whole year. Wow. It's a pretty it's pretty sucky so to what, break up with someone on Christmas Day. Isn't what do you it? reckon that is? So do you reckon like two weeks before they're thinking, right, oh god, I need to get a present for fucking Marley and Can't I'm like, be asked. Oh, I fucking hate what? the bitch. Do you know what? I'm at <laughs> it. I'm at it. I'm not Fuck coming you, to her bloody parents this Christmas. Screw it. Oh god, her mother. God, she stinks. I have to go all the way down to Gerbilum on sh- the shitter. The shiver. Sh- and it fucking hate it. Nothing to do. All the pubs closed. She's got me tickets for that fucking panto. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> what's what's uh, Tina Barrett's in uh, something, isn't she? Into panto she? as well. Yeah, she's doing panto. All these big stars. Kent, I think. Oh. <laughs> I beg your pardon. She's in a uh, dick witty. Did you call me? <laughs> I called you. A... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, dick witty. The la- world's largest Christmas stocking measured 106 feet and nine inches. Uh, 32.56 meters long. That's stupid, isn't it? Uh, because I mean, I can understand a giant Christmas tree because that's like a naturally occurring phenomenon and it's quite impressive. But when someone just knits a large stocking, that's that's stupid, isn't it? It weighed as much as what five reindeer and held almost a thousand presents. It was made by the Children's Society for Charity on London. There you go. So What a waste of fucking time. <laughs> oh, God, no. It's a charity. That was good. It was okay, a good thing to do. a good do. thing. Yeah. Each year, there are approximately 20,000 renter Santas across the United States. They usually undergo seasonal training on how to maintain a jolly attitude under pressure from the public. They also receive practical advice, such as not accepting money from parents while children are looking, and also avoiding garlic, onions, or beans for lunch. Okay. Well, that's so the last thing you want, isn't it? You, know, you don't want a kid breath. to sit on your. Every time a kid sits on your lap, you just let let one rip. You know. Ho ho ho, little fella! 
What would you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, beg my pardon. <laughs> oh, Santa's oh. a bit gassy from all of the cookies. Santa's got a bit of windy pops. Don't worry about that. All of the walnuts I've been eating. Hello. No, of course. Santa and Brian Blessed are very similar, aren't they? Very similar. I think they... Has anyone ever seen them in the same room together? I... Mm, this is a suspicious... This is r slash conspiracy. Mm. Oh, we should post this. Um, Bolivians celebrate Misa, de Gal, Misa, de, Misa del Galo, right? Okay. On Christmas Eve. What do you think that is? Um, mis, misa, misa, mis, miso soup. Misa del gallo. Del gallo. Is gallows. It's, so it's the hanging of the soup. Mm, it's actually the mass of the rooster. Uh, people bring their roosters to the midnight mass, a gesture that symbolises the belief that a rooster was the first animal to announce the birth of Jesus. There you go. Oh, OK. I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? You know, ah, 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 ah. you know that was... They were like, oh, the, the rooster is telling us that Jesus is here. That's right. But it's always done that. Every more, every single, no, no, it's saying that Jesus is here. But it's that every single morning. I've had that rooster three years and every morning when it's the sun comes up. It's reminding us that Jesus is here in, your, in our lives, Simon. Every, every morning. Every morning the roosters are very religious. They're, They're very, very religious. Observant, They're very observant, they? They, they point towards Jerusalem. Yeah, and? and then they lay a special egg, <laughs> and then a baby Jesus hatches out of the egg. This is a weird one that Tom's put in. The British, I guess this is for our other listeners who maybe aren't British, the British mm. wear paper crowns while they eat Christmas dinner. That's true. The crowns are stored in a tube called a Christmas cracker. People, are, that is sad to think that there's people over the, you know... In the world. That don't have Christmas crackers. Or paper crowns. The crown is to symbolise Jesus. Jesus as the king of the Jews. Oh, and the Christmas cracker symbolises... The blood of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know oh what it symbolises. I think it's just oh. bollocks. Uh, There's far too much blood of Christ in this episode. It really is. It's all over the place. Oh, God. Santa it's is covered in it. Sopping wet. It's <laughs> the blood of Christ. On. Um, oh, geez, all right. So, Mistletoe, Viscum album, cheers, is what? from the Al- Anglo Saxon word. What did you just say? Viscum, what did you fucking viscum call me? <laughs> <laughs> it's from the Anglo Saxon word mistletan, which means little dung twig, <laughs> because the plant spreads through bird droppings. So, birds oh. eat the mistletoe, poop the droppings, the seeds out, mm. and little dung twig. That's what mistletoe it's- is. It's like a um, little dung twig. It's like a sort. Of, it's a parasitic sort of plant, isn't it? it? It grows off of other trees. Does it? So yeah, that's pretty so that interesting. So makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the poop twig. There you go. So if you're kissing under the mistletoe, uh, just think about that. Think about poo. Think about poo. Ancient peoples, such as the Druids. What a what a what a sta- what a way to start. Ancient people such as the druids, <laughs> which can turn peoples. into bears or cats, okay, ancient... or moonkins. Could they considered mistletoe sacred because it remains green and bears fruit bears d- during the winter when all other plants appear to die. When you were reading that, did you think it was bears I did. as in the animal I thought bears, bears would eat it? No. Cuz it remains green and bears eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a better fact than what's here. Yeah. It doesn't die. Druids would cut it with golden sickles and never let it touch yeah. the ground. Okay, now everyone knows this if they've read the asterisk books. Oh, asterisk, what asterisk? You mean of as- asterisk? Asterix. Yeah, not the star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The French with an X, sorry. jolly fat Viking man. Yeah, with obelisk. Why did, and uh, Vercingetorix... And the and other get ones. A fix. And get a fix. That's right. Get a fix was the one with the golden sickle who cut the mistletoe. There were a bunch of like comedy names in Asterix. Do you remember? Dogmatics was Dogmatics his dog. was the dog. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was good. Uh, what was the name of the um, the chieftain? Because I don't understand. Uh, get uh, vital statistics. <laughs> vital statistics, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So yeah, uh, yeah. that is a good one. Uh, evergreens from the English word "ify," meaning always, and "guan," 
Guan, meaning to grow. If it go on. If it go on. That means always to grow. Always grow. Evergreens, if it go on. Go on would be well, a verb. Oh, go mm-hmm. on with you. Uh, have always been symbols of eternal life and rebirth. Mm. So this is the Christmas tree. The pagan use and worship of evergreen boughs and trees has evolved into the Christianized Christmas tree. So we get the Christmas the tree. Blood of Christ. No, no, no. The Christmas no, no, tree no, has no. nothing to do no, with Christ. No. It's to do with pagans. And then it was stolen by the Christians and used in their rituals. Yeah, because the, well, it's not stolen so much as adapted. Like everyone was doing it anyway, so they were like, oh. So it's like we'll remixed. Have it. Is that what yeah, we'll have it. Look, it's not hurting anyone. This is the remix. You know, so trees, they grow them for about 15 years. You know, that's the average sort of time that a tree has to grow before it gets cut down and put well, in someone's Chris- house. Oh, a Christmas tree? Yeah. 15 years? Yeah, it takes a long time to grow up to that size. Wow, I had no idea. I, I, I guess I didn't really think how long it would take. There's a lot of farms. I used to live near a big Christmas tree farm. Um, so what, they chop them all down and then it's empty for 15 years and then suddenly, after 15 years, boop, and no, they all no. appear at the ground. No, so they have like a... It's layered, layered, isn't it? So it's like in a slope, so there'll be like... Some that are 14, Don't 13, 12. Don't use that word. That's what got Top Gear in trouble. <laughs> because they viewed that. Christian Christmas as a decadent Catholic holiday. Oh, yeah. The, the Catholics well known for their decadence. The Puritans... Well, I guess they are in Rome. ...in America banned all Christmas celebrations from 1659 through to 1681... With a penalty oh, come on. No of one was five, in America. five shillings. No one was in America there. The population of America was like, you know, 20,000 people. That's true. Who gives a shit? St. Nicholas is based on a real person. What? Uh, St. Nicholas of Myra, also known as Nicolaus the Wonderworker, Bishop <laughs> St. Nicholas of Smyrna, and Nicolaus of Barry, who lived during the 4th century. Sorry, of Barry? Of Barry, yes. Barry? Barry. Well, Barry Town in Wales. Nicholas of Barry. Hello, yeah. I'm Nicholas of Barry. He also slew a dragon. Do you want to have a present, does you? <laughs> Born? I'll have a look in my sack. Oh, that was bad. I'd love a Welsh Santa. I think he'd do a good job. He's very friendly. He's very jolly. Uh you would have, like, some brains beer. As, uh, as, as Brian Blessed got some Welsh blood in him, I think you, you definitely have, right? I do, yeah. I don't think Brian Blessed does. I don't know. I think he's an adopted Welshman. Um, so he was born in modern-day Turkey, and he is the world's what, most... Brian Blessed? Popular. Brian Blessed was born in modern-day no, Turkey. No, Nicholas of Barry was. OK, right, OK. He was the world's most popular non-biblical saint, uh, with artists portraying him more often than any other saint except Mary. Right. Saint Mary. He is the patron saint of banking, what? Pawnbroking, pirating, butchers, sailing, what? thievery, orphans, what? royalty, New York City, and Christmas. What the fuck? So Saint Nicholas. How of can Barry, you be the patron saint of banking and thievery? Banking, pawnbroking, thievery. Because it's the same thing. Pirates and the royals. Pirating. It's all the same. Royalty, thieves, orphans. He's, he's the patron saint of cars. Pencils, belt buckles, biscuits, horses' manes, <laughs> biscuits, but only on a Wednesday. <laughs> windows, he's a patron saint of windows. Early illustrations of St. Nicholas depict him as stern, commanding, and holding a stiff birch rod. I beg your pardon? Oh, to like hit children with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've been bad, he just belts you with his rod. That's right. He was more of a symbol of discipline and punishment than the jolly, overweight elf children know today. Is he an elf? Apparently. He doesn't... But well, he's got magical right. powers. No one, else, no one else is allowed magical powers except Jesus. Jesus has superpowers. And the Santa. blood of Santa! <laughs> don't know. The holy blood of Saint Nick. That's what we're drinking on Christmas. Cheers. That's, what, that's eggnog. He bleeds... Like, Can I hear Kim screaming? Yeah, it's just fine. Don't worry about it. It's her birthday, isn't it? I mean, is it? Yeah, I think so. It's Shin's birthday on Christmas, or Boxing Day. Oh, no. It's a bit of a funny old time to have a birthday, isn't well, it? Well, we, ce- we celebrate his half birthday, don't we? Well, we said we would, and then we sort of forgot. Yeah, we didn't this year, because fuck him. No, no. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, sort we forgot. Of, we, we were busy, weren't we? Well, happy birthday, Shin. If you're listening to this on Boxing Day, on your birthday, yeah, and it is actually your birthday on Boxing Day... I think it is. Then happy... Happy... Have a good, birthday. It might be on Christmas Eve, actually. Happy birth musk. <laughs> Maybe you're related to Jesus. I don't think that's how it works. I think it is. I don't think I'm related to Albert Einstein. (laughs) 
back in the day, of wheat bread. Back in when just I was the young, carrot. Well, I assumed that back in the day, if somebody died at the same time as you were born, you oh. took over. This is one of the things that I sort of thought when I was a kid that for a long time, I obviously. For some reason, it got into my head that that was how it worked. And so, right. you know, if you... So like the soul of someone who dies immediately goes into a baby as it comes out of the mother. That's right. Yeah. So, like, so who, who died on the day that you were born? Uh, well, I can look it up. Uh, who died on... Who died 22nd October? 14th you... March 1978. It's got to be the year as well. Uh, a guy called Hans Peter Knaust died. Also, Lawrence Bagley. Oh, my God, Lawrence Bagley. That is literally me. See, Lewis Brindley. Oh, my God! Lawrence Bagley. He was an artist born in Southampton. That was where I was born! Oh, my God! He, but he didn't... I don't know if he died there. It doesn't matter. Soul can travel. So someone born in the same place as you, with a very similar name, died on the very day that you, you were, were brought born. into the world. Lawrence Bagley. It's true. He's got a whole mm. Wikipedia article about him. What about you? Did you have someone who died on your birthday? Uh, maybe it was like Stephen um, Lawrence. Steve, Stephen Lanson. Hang on, hang on, I'm having... What was he called? John Marshall Butler. John Marshall... So close. An American lawyer and politician. Okay. He was a senator for Maryland from 1951 to 1963. Well, there you go. See? Not very interesting. It's very possible that he... He took di- over. He died from a heart attack in North Carolina. Well, it might have taken a little while to, to travel over. But there you go. That might have happened. I don't know why I believe that. It's that's a cool very, idea. That's not very interesting. I'm, I'm not sure I want to be him reincarnated. Well, you wouldn't know. Can I be someone interesting like Julius Caesar's? Oh, sure. Well, the thing is, you don't know whether... If you have to line it all up, go back. So you have to look at someone who was died on the day that he was born. Right, so when was oh. he born? Uh, I don't know. I know he died in the Ides of March. So, which is around March, which is when I was born. Does it have Does it have his birthday on the Wikipedia article? Uh, well, the problem is the calendar's changed a few times. What do you mean? Well, there's the I mean, there's the Julian calendar that he came up with. So he invented a calendar. What are you talking about? Dates. No, what are you talking about? You know, you know dates that we use. No, I'm talking. No, I'm talking about Stephen Lawrence Butler, James Butler, whoever. Oh, your I guy. thought you were talking about Julius Caesar. No, I don't. No, we have to go backwards. So, like, st- get Butler's birthday. I thought we were. I thought we were starting with Julius Caesar. No, we can't start with Julius. Caesar. We've got to work backwards. See who you were actually okay. related to. We so, we're, want to look, so we're starting with me. We can't just assume that you okay. came from Julius Caesar, right? We want to find out actually who you were. Okay, gotcha. You might be Julius Caesar's. Sex boy. Because I'm sure we can... Or, like, Julius Caesar's... His what? His, his, like, sex boy. His sex boy? All Roman emperors had a sex boy. (laughs) Don't you know this? Don't you know anything? I don't don't know. Have we got a sex boy? Yes. Who is it? Uh, Tom. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) And you have to have sex with him on Christmas. It's fine. Oh, no. It's the rule. Or or else what? Or else you don't get any presents. Oh my god! I'm not sure I like this. I'm not sure Tom will like it either. Well, he hasn't got a choice. Oh god! This is a tradition. Oh why? We have to wear the Christmas paper hat, pull the cracker, and have sex with <laughs> no! sex boy. You have to do it. It's how things are done in England. Sexy boy, I'm not your boy toy. Boy toy. You have to sing that in a cat clavier. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. So what? Wait, what? 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 What fact were we on? Uh, we're looking for. I can't even remember Stephen where we started Butler's with this. birthday, so we can find out who died on the day that he was born. So we oh, can this work is far our way too backwards. laborious. I'm not going to work back well, two thousand fucking out years. Who you were related to? We need to find out. I bet you can do it. Do it. It will take me months. It will take you research. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, look, we're not going to do that. Let's just say I'm not related to Julius Caesar after all. <laughs> okay? We're just going to assume that you're not. Because it's probably quite unlikely. Okay. All uh, right. <laughs> there. It is estimated because... um, that the single White Christmas by Irving Berlin is the best-selling single of all time with 100 million sales. There you go. The most pop- so if you want to get do a, do 
do this is what all the bands used it, to say, isn't it? So did it did it sell more than you know simply having a wonderful Christmas time? I assume so. Yeah, probably. Wow, it says so here. Because that's always unless on. Tom's wrong. Uh, the first person to decorate a Christmas tree was Martin Luther. Okay. According to legend, he was so moved by the beauty of the stars shining between the branches of a fir tree, he brought home the tree and decorated it with candles. That kind of sounds like bollocks to me. It does. What a coincidence that the first person to do it was actually someone quite famous. So there's 35 million real Christmas trees cut down and sold every year in the US. That's a lot, isn't it? In the US. I don't know. It's, it's a bit... It's a lot. I don't know. What? It's like, it's like the first Christmas present was given by David Bowie. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, what? <laughs> In Germany, Heiligabend, or Christmas Eve, oh. is said to be a magical time when the pure of heart can hear animals talking. So that's holy evening... What do you think that they, the cats would be saying in the um, in the cat piano if they were if they could hear them? Um, so what you're listening? Well, no, it, they wouldn't be in the piano. They'd just be sat there talking. They'd be yeah. They'd be like licking their assholes and they'd be going luscious. Oh, luscious, gross, luscious. You, you luscious. really know how to make cats mm. like you know you bring out the best in them. Ooh. Any cat owner knows this though. Oh, I love tossing my own salad. Ooh, it's delicious. Gross. That's what that's what we'd be hearing, and we would be appalled, and we'd throw out all of our pets. Yeah, out into the into the mm. winter. Don't do that. The Viking god Odin is one precursor to the modern Santa Claus. No, he isn't. That'd be fucking stupid. According to <laughs> what is that? old stories, Odin rode... He had a beard, exactly the same as Santa Claus! Hang on. He rode on a flying horse called Slepnir, who is a precursor to Santa's reindeer, who had eight legs. How is that like Santa's reindeer? Because it was like it looks like the train, doesn't it? Like, well, it's just a flying horse. But it's One got eight legs, flying though. horse is the same as eight reindeer. No, it's like two reindeers in a row. In the winter, Odin gave out both gifts to good children and punishments to bad children. Oh. He would fill their boots or stockings. Uh, children would fill their boots or stockings with treats for Slipnir. So they would so leave Santa out. So Santa wouldn't fill their stockings. The children would put up stockings filled with. Like apples, yeah, and for the reindeer. That's right, and carrots. Oh maybe, no, he was, no, he wasn't Rudolph. a reindeer. He was a horse. Slepnir, yeah. Slepnir the horsk. Yeah, he was a horsk uh, with eight legs, like a spider. Spider's legs on a horse. That is terrifying. Oh God, don't even go there. I'm just gonna count. I'm just gonna plow on he's, with these he's facts. Gonna, facts. Does he sleep in a web uh, in a stable? Oh God. And he sits there and he catches apples oh, in well, the web. You say that, the earliest known Christmas tree decorations were actually apples. At Christmas time, medieval actors would decorate paradise trees, fir trees, with apples during paradise plays, dis- plays despicting, depicting depicting Adam and Eve's creation and fall. There you go. Oh, OK. There you go. Oh, sure. I mean, I believe that one. So I've got some true or false questions for you. Are they more Christmas facts? No, this time I've got some Christmas facts, but I've also got some Christmas bollocks that, I, that we've made up. Um, so so facts and factoids, fact is that it? or bollocks. Okay. Because factoid is, is a word that doesn't means not it means a wrong fact, right? So you're going to give but, me you're going to tell me something, and I have to say if it's true or false. Yeah, fact, the word factoid sounds like a small fact, but, but it's it not. It's a bollock. So it's fact bollock. or bollock? A small bollock. Yes. A walnut. Fact or walnut. Catalonians include the figure of Cagna in is their... Is that in Spain? Catalonian in their Catalonians, or... yeah. It's like an area of Spain. It's a little bit like Wales. It's like, like Spanish Wales. They're going to break off one day. But they're not that mad about it. They're kind of okay. But if, you know, if, if in England, right, if Scotland went, Wales would probably go, Northern Ireland would go, and then Cornwall would be like, we're going as well. And we'd be like, fuck you, Cornwall. You're staying. Mm. Catalonia's a little bit like the Wales of... of um, of Spain. There's a bunch the of Spanish regions. The Wales of Spain. Because they speak their own language, <laughs> Catalan, don't they? Oh, OK. Anyway. No, that's Matalan you're thinking of. That's a clothing company. You're thinking of oh. uh, MFI. No, or, you're no, thinking of... Um, Ikea. I- that's where you get your Christmas trees. No, you're thinking of Primark. Oh, uh, yeah, of course I am. Uh, so either, right. one of these is true or false, Catalonians... Uh, either. ...include a figure of Cagna in their nativity scenes. This is, is- a small figure 
of a defecating man. Okay? <laughs> so Catalonians okay. have a little man in the back of their nativity scene taking shit. Or in Ottawa, it is tradition for the family to wander the woods looking for the Christmas Sasquatch. No, that's not real. That can't be real. So it one would be, of those I mean, is real. Okay, Ottawa is Canada. I think it's where Dead Mouse is from. And it it gets so, so cold up there. There is no way that a family would be out there in, like, the middle of winter. No, it's like a native, around. native thing that they've included in no, there. No, 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 no. That wouldn't happen. You would die. You'd freeze to death. Okay, so which one are you going with? I've got to go for the, the shitting man. It's true. Yes, that's the true one. Oh my well God. done. Is it a symbol of, like, rebirth or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's a symbol of um, make sure to eat healthily. Uh, what is it? I mean, it's got to stand for something, isn't it? What is it? Cagner. Well, we can Google him, I guess. Jeez. Uh, I don't even spell Cagner. C-A-G-N-E-R. Oh, uh, right. Or K- Kagana. So it's like Magna. Okay, here, here we go. So El Kagana literally means the crapper or <laughs> the shitter. Wow. He is depicted <laughs> as a peasant wearing a traditional Catalan red cap with his trousers down showing his bare backside shitting. Why is why is his cap red? Because it's the... The blood of oh, Christ! <laughs> shit, of course it is. Uh, so the Kagana, uh, by creating feces, is fertilising the earth. Oh, right. He was a customary yeah, figure sense. in the 19th century because people believe that this deposit symbolically fertilised the ground of the nativity scenes, which became fertile and ensured the nativity wait, scene wait, wait, would wait. come back the following but year. nativity scene, if I remember correctly, there's a little donkey. Ah. There's some sheep. There's some cows. Oh, my God. Many modern Kaganas... Kaganas represent celebrities and authority figures. Oh my god. By representing them with their pants down, the Kagana serves as a levelling device to bring the mighty down. So it's a little bit like us burning the guy at Guy Fawkes night, you know. We need we totally need to have like a David Cameron shitting in a nativity scene. In Norway, there is no cleaning on Christmas Eve. All the brooms are hidden away in case they are stolen by witches and evil spirits. Or I don't know about that one. <laughs> In Germany, there is a Christmas goblin called Der Krinkelsnatch that is said to eat children's belts if they have been bad, causing their pants to fall <laughs> off on the way to Christmas mass. No, that can't be true. I... I uh, One of those is true. It, I reckon it's the, the, the witch's broomstick thing. That sounds more likely to be like folklore than... Um, yeah, you're too good at this. This is that's true as well. Okay. Crinkle snatch. Fantastic. That's, that's ridiculous. Okay. I'm sure I would have heard of that. Number three. Uh, thanks to a campaign in 1974, many Japanese families eat KFC on Christmas Eve. <laughs> okay. Right. Or, or in certain parts of Spain, it is believed that hiding a prawn in your lover's shoe will bring vitality to their love. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> so, thanks to the campaign in 1974, many Japanese families eat KFC on Christmas Eve. 1974. Do you reckon? I, I'm not sure there would be a KFC in, in Japan or, in 74. Many Spanish people believe that hiding a prawn in your lover's shoe will bring vitality to their love. The prawn one sounds much more likely okay. than KFC in Japan in the 70s. In fact, it is that. Oh no! It way. is the KFC, and the thing is, I I read a lot about this, what? and it's 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 a big thing. It's like it's, they, they eat chicken at Christmas, and it's I, but eating I, chicken is one thing. Eating KFC is an entirely different thing. There's an amazing set of statistics. So you know, Okinawa was this one of these Japanese islands that was um you know a big a big part uh, of World War Two when the Americans took it over. Uh, and, <laughs> no. I don't. I don't know that. Is oh. that an, except is that something that people know? No, I've just know a lot about World War Two. That's oh, okay. all. But right. Okinawa was this place where there was a battle. It was bad. It was in the Battle of the Pacific. You know, a lot of Americans died taking Okinawa, which was kind of a not a very well. It's not very. It was a very strategic place because they could use Okinawa to uh, launch airships to uh, airplanes to attack Japan. Right. That, so it was part of the whole campaign to so america when they were fighting the pacific war they had to go through all of these small islands first of all before they could take japan they and couldn't this, just go straight and this there. island would be this is like a foothold it, on the doorstep of japan it was fairly loosely populated but 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 
because it was controlled very closely by America, we know exactly what they ate from the after the war and for the next 20 sort of years until the Americans gave it back in and they like 1970. Fried chicken. <laughs> no, and they ate an incredible plant based diet um, of only sort of mostly sweet potatoes and about 1% fish and, and, and animal products, mostly plants oh. though. It was these purple sweet potatoes that they ate a lot of, oh. a traditional Okinawan diet. And they were found to have the lowest health problems in the world. Oh, my God. It's like a miracle plant. It was one of these places where people live to 100. If we ate nothing but those sweet potatoes... Yeah. Oh, my God. They were like the perfect food. And where so, can I get them? Well, I They're don't know. They're extinct They're now. purple. No, you can get them. But oh, right. since uh, 1971, apparently there have been built like 15 KFCs built on Okinawa. Oh, no. And the population, their diet has completely changed and they're now as unhealthy as Americans Ah. Because they're eating American food. Because they're eating the different diet, yeah. So they used to have this incredible thing where, you know, they're, they they wouldn't have hypertension, they wouldn't have heart... Well, I, I say they wouldn't, but... So what you're saying is that if someone is out, it's it's getting late, you know, the sun's come down, their stomach's rumbling, and again, I, I, you know, I really should eat something, and in front of them there's two restaurants. There's a KFC and then there's potato restaurant. That's right. <laughs> You're saying that they should avoid the KFC and they should eat from potato restaurants. I'm, no, I'm suggesting that... Sweet potato restaurant. It's all about balance, that's all. And I think that... Uh, Everything in moderation. Yeah. Even KFC. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So You like your KFC, don't you? It's a secret, a secret Christmas tree, I must admit. Maybe I'm really a Japanese person. I'd, I'd like it in Japan, I think. Uh, so, question five... Germans hide a pickle in the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. The first child to discover rude. it in the, hide the pickle. Hide the pickle. The first child to discover it in the morning receives a small gift of a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> of a small pickle. There you go. You can keep that. <laughs> Happy that's, Christmas. That sounds quite... I, I believe that. I believe that. I don't know what the next one is. You believe the Germans hide a pickle yeah, in totally the Christmas tree? I totally believe it's okay. that. I want, I want it to be true. In Braganca, Portugal, right. it's traditional to make a batch of boiled eggs on the day after Christmas, one of which, however, is rotten. Ew. The family take turns eating the eggs until someone oh, bites into the rotten one and they are then proclaimed El Ovo. Mr. Egg. Yeah. The egg. Mr. Egg. You had the egg. What do you think? The pickle? I want to believe the pickle one because that egg one's gross. Well, you're right. It's the pickle one. Oh, Germans apparently love to hide a pickle in the Christmas tree. I Can never, you believe that? I, ne I didn't think the Germans were sort of big on pickles. but These, uh. these facts, I hope they're all real. Um, they've been researched laboriously by our crack team of Tom. Mm. Um, yeah. Ukrainians... Decorate their trees with artificial spiders and webs Ugh. instead of tinsel and baubles. That's because they believe in uh, Odin and his Slepnir spider, spider uh, reindeer. Do you remember? Are you sure? With the eight that? legs, yeah. Uh, okay. Up until 1993 in Melmo, Denmark, uh, Sweden. Sweden, yeah. Elders of the town would meet for the ceremony of Christmas joy where they would practice free love in celebration of ooh, Christmas. Ooh, what? Participants ooh, could be identified cool, by say. a sprig of mistletoe behind their right ear. So free love. So there's a free love festival in Malmo. Melmo. See, again, there's one which is really nice and one which is horrible. Or Ukrainians decorate their trees with <clears throat> artificial spiders and webs instead See, of tinsel and baubles. That's just messed up. Because, I mean, I mean the problem with having real trees in your house is that there can be, like, bugs and stuff hidden in them. So, absolutely not. No, no, I want to believe that the, the free love is true and not spiders. Apparently it's actually the Christmas spider. No, <gasps> yeah. That's messed, that's horrible. It's true, do you want to hear the story? The legend of the Christmas spider. The legend of the Christmas spider. A poor but hard-working widow once lived in a small hut with her children. One summer day, a pine cone fell on the earthen floor of the hut and took root. The widow's children cared for the tree, excited at the prospect of having a Christmas tree by winter. Mm -hmm. The tree grew, but when Christmas Eve arrived, they could not afford to decorate it. The children sadly went to bed and fell asleep, ignore the screaming. 
Early the next morning, they mm. woke up and saw the tree covered with cobwebs. When they opened the windows, the first rays of sunlight touched the webs and turned them into gold and silver. The widow and her children oh. were rich, and from then on, they never lived in poverty. Right, OK. So, what? I get it, I get it. It's like, um, was it Rapunzel that, that um, sewed oh. straw into gold? Maybe. So it's a similar kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, I still wouldn't like spiders, even if they shitted out gold and silver. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the last one. In Croatia, the tradition Slipji Noci is where parents blindfold their children on Christmas Eve to prevent them from seeing Santa. It is said that if they see him bringing presents, they will turn he will turn them into a log. Oh, my God. Okay, or... The Yule cat is said to stalk <laughs> the Icelandic hills. Those who oh. don't receive new clothes before Christmas Eve are said to be devoured by this mythical beast. Okay, oh, so it's either God. in Croatia, Slipji Noci, parents blindfold their children to prevent them from seeing Santa, who will turn them into a log if they see him, or... The Yule cat stalks the Icelandic hills, and those who don't receive new clothes before Christmas Eve are devoured by the Yule cat. I'll see. Now, I'm willing to believe either one of those. They're pretty believable, but one of them is bollocks. I mean, Icelandic people sort of, they have a lot of weird-ass folklore about, like, elves and stuff. They do. um, That they kind of take semi-seriously. It's kind of like an in-joke. But then it's an in-joke that everyone is sort of in on and affects things that they actually do. <laughs> what is it? What do you it, think it is? It's like something they're embarrassed to kind of believe in. I, I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to go with the cat. Oh, you're right, it is the oh! cat. Well done. So it's a, a vis- huge and vicious cat, Yola Kotur, uh, which is said to lurk about the snowy countryside and eat people who have not received any new clothes. Oh, so man, that's messed up. It's one up. of these old things. The threat of being eaten... What if you're from a poor family? Well, you're going to be here, eaten by a big cat. The threat of being eaten by Yule Cat was used by farmers as an incentive for their workers to finish processing the autumn wool before Christmas. So you can get paid? The so ones who can... took part in the work would be rewarded with new clothes, but those who did not would get nothing and would be preyed upon by the monstrous cat. Oh my the cat God. has alternatively been interpreted as merely eating away the food of ones without new clothes, however. But oh. it is a man-eating beast. By popularized by Johannes Urkotlum by his in his poem Yola Koturin. There you go. Holy crap. The hungry pusk. The hungry, hungry pusk. The very hungry caterpillar. Well, there you go. That, I think, was a pretty fantastic uh, Christmas I podcast. I feel like I know more about Christmas than I ever did before, Lewis. Do you want to do one more special one to, before we go? I feel like we should do one more special one. Okay, we'll do one more. It's like an encore, okay? So it's like, we'll say goodbye and then we'll do an encore. Okay. Like in the stage show, right? Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Bye. Watching? What do you mean? Listening. It's a podcast. Bye. Bye. And then we'll come back round. We'll go off stage. Yeah. And we're coming back on now. And right. everyone's like applauding oh, crazily. It's good Standing to have you back. Yeah, special return. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So I've got a story here. <laughs> It has to be in cat. Oh, I can't do free bird as a cat. That's <laughs> that's asking way too Go much. Go for it. You could do it. You could do it, man. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the crowd goes wild. Okay, so uh, do you want to just turn on your monitor so you can see what I'm showing you? So there is... <laughs> that's, that's I think that's so enough. Uh, oh, in okay. Gavle, this is real apparently, in, this is absolutely real. In yeah, yeah. Gavle or Gavle, Got Sweden... It. Every year, the authorities install a straw Yule goat. Oh. However, vandals have... They, they like to burn this goat down. Okay, so Arsonists. It's, it's been going for 47 years, but it's become a sort of bit of a tradition in the town to burn it down. However, the, mm. the authorities 
really don't want them to burn it down. So they've worked harder and harder every year to try and stop them burning down. Right. But it keeps getting burned down. Okay. So it looks like a big, massive, great big woolly goat. The gavly goat. Ga- oh. Gavly bo- Give give le book. Give le book. Give le book. And it is displayed erected annually at Slot Storget. So it's a giant wicker goat. It's a giant wicker goat. Um, and it's actually on the Wikipedia oh, article. Oh, Christ! No! No! <laughs> Christ! God, no! It's got Edward Woodward burning to death inside of it. <laughs> oh, just what... But I think that's what the, the authorities are like. So it's been going since 1966 uh, when Stig Govlin... Oh, that's his name. The, go- the Govlin. Came Gavlin. up with the idea of making a giant goat out of straw. But it turned out that they mean? didn't have what? enough funding. Wait, 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 wait. What? He came up with the idea of building a giant goat out of straws and ev- everyone went, that is a brilliant idea. But he that didn't have fantastic. enough funding. So Harry Strom, he went who to was the, bank, the chairman he said, of Mr. Bank Manager, I need 100,000 kroner because I want to build a giant goat out of straw. That's right. And the goat stood until midnight on New Year's Eve when it went up in flames. Oh. The perpetrator, who was from Horforth, Gastrikland, was found and convicted of vandalism. But the first goat was insured and Strom got all of his hmm, money back. What a coincidence. Well, there you hmm. go. So, uh, he rebuilt it uh, the next year, and yeah. it was fine. But, and, and, but, but in 1969, it was burnt down again. In 1970, the goat was burnt down only six hours after it was assembled. Two very drunk teenagers were connected okay. with the crime. So, but, hang on, that's so in five years, three times. Yep. Yeah. But then, with the help of several financial contributions, the goat was reassembled out of Lake Reed. Uh, yeah. However... Uh, a different group took over. So it's kind of damp. In 1973, the goat collapsed because of sabotage. Uh, in 1974, it just what, says the, burned. The, the Beastie Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Those fuckers. In 1976, it was hit by a car. In 1978, <laughs> the goat was kicked to pieces by an angry crowd. Oh, my Vandals. God. In 1979, the goat was burnt before it was even erected. It was... N- Wait. But a new one was built and fireproofed. However, it got destroyed and was smashed into pieces. Why are people destroying it? I don't What's know. What's going on? In 1980, it burnt down on Christmas Eve. In 1982, it burnt down on the 13th of December. On 1983, its legs fell off. In 1984, <laughs> it burnt down on the 12th of December. Oh, oh my, my God. God. It kept burning down. It was ridiculous. Um... In 1986, so, they were unwilling to build... Oh, no, they were willing to build it, it once again. Is it like a bonfire? Is the whole point that it is supposed to burn? No, it's no. not. It's, they're supposed to do stuff with it afterwards. So why they? do they make it out of such flammable material? Well, they tried not to. Why it's, don't they make it out of make, bricks? They said it's making Don't they it, know the, the three little pigs? <laughs> well, you can't make one out of bricks. You've got to throw it up quick. Anyway, the merchants of Gavla decided they were to build the goat once again. They built two. One of them right. burnt down right. on Christmas Eve. In 1987, a heavily fireproof. So hang on, hang goat. on. So they built two, one burnt down, and they were like, ah, <laughs> we still that got wasn't one. the real one. It this was the Trojan goat. One. In 1987, a heavily fireproof goat was built. It got burnt down a week before Christmas. It, well, it couldn't have been that heavily fireproof. In 1988, nothing happened to the goat. Oh, but thank God. gamblers oh. were able to gamble on the fate of the goat with English bookmakers. Right. Okay. There was obviously some some some. There were like happened. people with guns. <laughs> Surrounding it. In yeah. 1989, the goat burnt down before it even got to be assembled. Brilliant. However, p- financial contributions were raised from the public to rebuild a goat, which then burned down. Yay! In March 1990, another goat was built for the shooting of a Swedish motion picture called Blackjack, and it was guarded by many volunteers throughout to 1991. Okay. Uh, the and same then it burnt goat- down. <laughs> No, hang on. It did, no, no, hang on. It? The, it did. In 1991, the goat was joined by an advertising sled that turned out to be illegally built. And on the morning of Christmas Eve, it was burnt down! Oh, no. It was later rebuilt to be taken to Stockholm as part of a protest campaign against the closing of a military regiment. But in 1992, it burnt down! Um... The Natural Science Club built a new one and it burnt down. Oh, no. <laughs> so the Southern Merchants rebuilt it and it was burnt down again. So, so this three. year, there were three burnings. Oh, shit. That is unbelievable. 1992 was a bad year for, for straw goats. Fucking three times. Jesus. The goat was featured in the Guinness Book of Records because it was the largest goat ever. It was burnt guarded down. by taxis and the Swedish Home Guard. Nothing happened. Okay. Oh, what a relief. In 1994... 
Nothing happened. The GOAT followed the Swedish national hockey team to Italy for the World what do you Championship. Mean followed? Well, well, I, think like they, trotting. I think that they found <laughs> the road. <laughs> it survived and they, they sent I think they send the goats off, they do stuff. In 1995, the goat came back and a Norwegian was arrested for attempting to burn down the goat. No, and they stopped him. In any Got case, you, it still burnt down oh. on the morning of Christmas Day. Oh uh, my god. Hey, what a way to spend Christmas Day burning down a giant goat. In 1996. The goat was guarded by webcams, but nothing happened. What? A bunch of webcams were guarding it. with guns. In 1997, (laughs) the goat was damaged by fireworks. Oh. Uh, The Natural Science Club's goat was attacked too, but it survived. So there were two goats. There's two goats now going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm confused. Uh, In 1998, the goat burned down on the 11th of December, and there was a major blizzard. Uh, Then again, it was rebuilt, apparently, in 1998. Good. Uh, in 1999, burnt down a couple of hours after it was erected, oh, rebuilt, no. but then it got burnt down again oh, in no. 2000. Burnt down! Uh, the Natural Science Club's goat got tossed in the river. Tossed in a river? In two- how, do you, how do you toss a giant goat? <laughs> I don't know. How tall are these There's goats? There's two goats running in parallel. How tall are they? They're in big, 2001, they? the goat got set on fire. On the 23rd of December by Lawrence Jones, a 50-year-old, 51-year-old visitor from Cleveland, Ohio, that who busted. spent 18 years in jail. 18 years? Sorry, 18 days. 18 years? <laughs> Sorry, days. Holy shit. <laughs> that is harsh. He's been Burning 18... <laughs> down a goat 18 years days. in prison. He spent 18 days in prison and was subsequently ordered to pay 100,000 Swedish kroner in damages. The court confiscated Jones's cigarette lay- lighter with the argument that he was clearly not able to handle it. Jones stated in court that he was no goat burner and believed he was taking part in a completely legal goat burning tradition. What? After Jones was released from jail, he went straight back to the US without paying his fine. Oh, As of 2006, it's still unpaid. Uh, note, the Natural Science Club's goat also got burned down. <laughs> That's like a little note on the end of 2001. P.S. The goat burnt down. So... Two th- so 2002, they were book fucked. Oh, and then 2001, they got chucked in the river. 2002... Yeah. A 22 year old from Stockholm tried to set the goat on fire but failed. The goat only uh, receiving minor damage. Just a little singe. The goat was ear. guarded by Swedish radio and TV personality Gert Fielking. Oh. Oh my God, he's a bit like Brian Blessed, I guess. You know, maybe. Somebody. His will. name sounds a bit like goat fucking. <laughs> Gert Fielking. Gert Fielking. Gert Fielking. We know what he was doing to guard the goat. He was faking the goat. <laughs> It was just pissing bay. <laughs> have a massage for Ronnie. <laughs> oh, shit. In 2003, the goat was burnt down on 12th of December. It was. On 2004, the goat was burnt down yeah. on 21st of December. The fire brigade arrived quickly on the scene, but the goat could not be saved and no, no new goat was built. Uh, like they were Meanwhile, doing... the orphanage burnt down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. We tried our best to save the goat. Oh, but a hundred orphans all died. In 2005, the goat was burned down, mm-hmm. reportedly by unknown vandals dressed as Santa and the gingerbread man. They shot a flaming arrow at the goat at, ele- at 9 oh o'clock God. on the 3rd of December. That is pretty badass. It was reconstructed on the 5th of December. The hunt for the arsonist responsible for the goat burning was widely featured on weekly Swedish live broadcast TV3's Most Wanted on the 8th of December. Oh, my God. There you go. 2006, on the night of the 15th of December, at 3am, when everyone was asleep, someone tried to set fire to the goat by dousing the right front leg in petrol. Oh, no. The red ribbon on that leg was slightly burned and fell off. No! The lower part of the right leg was scorched, but the rest of the goat failed to light. The leg was repaired the next morning. However... The vet came... On the... That's the (laughs) the Natural Science Club's goat was burned down at about... 20 to 1 o'clock on 20th of December. The vandals were not seen and got away. And on the ninth, on the night of the 25th of December, a drunken man climbed up onto the goat. No! Uh, but before police arrived, the man had climbed down and disappeared. He did not try to set fire to the goat. Why is it even mentioned then? <laughs> the merchants, the, the goat survived and was taken down and is now stored in a secret location. I'm sure, I'm sure in the history of like the 40 years that it's been going on, right? Yeah. That he was not the first person to climb on top of a straw goat. Unlikely. Um, in 2007, the Natural Science Club's goat was toppled on the 13th of December and was burned on the 24th no. of December. However, the southern goat survived. Oh, okay. so, well, that's at least uh, something. 
In 2008, 10,000 people turned out for the inauguration of one of the goats. No backup goat was built no. to replace the oh, main goat fuck. should the worst they happen. They put all their Nor goats in one basket. was the goat treated with flame repellent. Oh, my God. Anna Ostman, spokesperson of the goat committee, said the repellent made it look ugly in the previous years, like a brown terrier. So they're asking for trouble. So it's set it up. White. So there was only one goat. It's not fire protected. And there were, uh, there were 10,000 people waiting around. However... All with, like... Sparklers. Although it was vandalised, <laughs> it was re- it, and later removed, it did not burn down. On the 26th of December, there was an attempt to burn down the other goat, but patriotic well, passers-by managed well, to extinguish the fire. They pissed on it. However, the following day, the goat finally succumbed to the flames ignited by an unknown assailant oh. at 3.50 in the morning. Brilliant. Shit! So some people saved it, but it burned down anyway. Fuck. In 2009... A person attempted to set the southern merchant's goat on fire on the 7th of December and an unsuccessful attempt was made to throw the other goat into the river. (gasps) But the culprit then tried again without success to set the goat on fire, but no one managed. Someone stole, however, the natural science cub's goat using a truck on the 14th of December. So they tried to throw it in the river. never was found. They tried to set it on fire. They were unsuccessful, so they just stole it. Yes, right. Okay. On the dis- night of the 23rd of December before 4 a.m., the southern merchant goat was set on fire and burned, eat down to its frame, even though it had a thick layer of snow oh. on its back. The goat had two online webcams that were put out of service by a DDoS attack oh my God. instituted by computer hackers just before the burning. They're in on it too. Oh, my God. In 2010, on the night of the 2nd of December, Arsis made an unsuccessful attempt to burn the goat. On the 17th of December... The news site reported that one of the guards tasking with protecting the southern goat had been offered payment to leave his post so the goat could be stolen by a helicopter and transported to Stockholm. How far was that? However, he didn't take the bribe. Both goats survived, were dismantled and returned to storage for display in 2011. Oh, well. Okay. So they they didn't have to rebuild new goats. They could just use the the old ones because they survived. So... The inauguration of the goats took place on the 27th of November in 2011. Mm. Firefighters of Gavla sprayed the goat with water to create a coating of ice in the hope oh, of protecting I, it, I can picture it from arson. This, this shining, frosty goat. However, mild weather, unusually mild weather, melted the ice and the goat was burnt down! Oh, for God's sake. On the early morning of the 2nd of December, it barely lasted at all. Jesus. Uh, the inauguration of the 2012 goat took place on the 2nd of December and it was burnt down no! 10 days later. Uh, in 2013, oh. uh, the straw w- for built was soaked in highly anti-flammable liquid to prevent ah. it from burning down in the event of an arson attack. Try your best. However, it burnt down oh. on the 21st of December. Uh, and then the last year, 2014. Oh, Three attempts of arson were made, but the goat survived. Yeah, And it was dismantled on the 29th of December, where it was sent Woo! to China and featured in prominent Year of the Goat celebrations. Woo! And it's still going around the world doing stuff. Oh, man. But what's going to happen this year? Well, 2015. we're going to find out. Burn right. down! Is it going to burn down? I Is it going to make it? If, you know, you're, you're planning to see the goat, you know, don't burn it down this no. year. Uh, Just let it, let it stay but, there. You know, it's a cool thing. I, I would say, you know, try and do your best to defend the goat, but I don't want anyone to get into trouble and get injured by trying to, you know, defend it from arsonists. No, don't um, burn yourself to death. Be no. very careful. Petrol's if it came down to it was you or the goat, you know, let the goat burn. What a nice message to finish. What a real true message of the Christmas. Spirit, because Christmas really is all about goats burning. It really is. It? That's what the, that's what it is. That's the 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 message of Christmas. I hope we've got that. I hope the meaning that of Christmas. <laughs> it's, it's a delicious, well done, goat snake, steak, mm, snake, snake, a goat snake, a hairy goat snake. I think this has been a great podcast. I hope you've mm. all enjoyed it. I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas. Uh, we are going to go. I'm going to go and relax my voice now. Okay. I'm going to go and uh, have an eggnog oh. and uh, drink some of the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ! <laughs> and uh, maybe listen to some cat cat music. Okay. Uh, until then, I will see you next time. Bye!